Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. So despite the title and thumbnail of this video, today is an amazing day. Do you wanna know why? because today is our last day on the road. By the end of this video, we will be back home in Texas. Our epic trip to Maine is finally coming to an end and we are so excited to finally get home and spend some time with our friends and family in the greatest state ever, Texas. But before we get going, let's talk about the problem we're having. So what problems are we having with our RV now? Well, you guys remember a few weeks ago, we had a water leak in our basement and it ended up flooding the entire basement and ruining all kinds of stuff. And it's gonna become a project. So much of a project that we decided to wait until we got home to fix it. And we were just gonna manage it until then. Well, the problem we're having is associated with the water system. Ever since the leak happened, we've been managing our problem by filling our onboard freshwater tanks and using our onboard pump to supply water to the RV. And that's been working out great because it allowed us to monitor the leak without having to pull the wall down every time to check it. Because if you have a leak, the pump's gonna run uncontrollably. And so far, that's been great. That was until two days ago. So what happened two days ago? Well, two days ago, the water pump on this RV decided it's done working. So now we have no way to have water on the RV without hooking back up to the spigot. And that normally wouldn't be a problem, except for right now, it's freezing and has been freezing for the last several days. So what have our days looked like since the water pump broke? Well, let me tell you all about it because it's pretty inconvenient when you don't have a working water pump. So we're here in town to visit with friends and family. So we actually haven't been at the RV very much. We've been at friends and family's house. But when we are here, our day starts like this. I have to wait in the morning until it stops freezing. I come out here and I hook the water lines up. We do all the things in the morning that we need to do with water. And then when we leave for the day, we unhook the water and we go do our adventures for the day. When we get back home, usually it's pretty close to freezing. We hook the water lines up, we take our showers, we wash our dishes, and we do anything we need to do with water. Then we fill containers full of water inside the RV and we have to come out here and unhook our water supply because it's freezing every night. And that's how we survive each night. And that's how it's been for the last two days and that's how it's gonna be at least for the next two days until we get back home to Texas because this needs to be fixed sooner than later. I know what some of you are probably thinking. You're probably saying, why don't you get a heated water hose? Well, that's a great question. And I have a great answer. I actually have a two part answer for that. One, we travel full time and we purposely try to avoid freezing weather. So for us, it doesn't make much sense to travel with a heated water hose the entire year, just to use it a few times. And two, our water softener system and filter system. So we have the Bluetech water filter system and softener and the hoses that go with it. Well, having a heated water hose doesn't solve my problem because I have no way of keeping the water filter and water softener from freezing up. Let alone, it would take three heated hoses to make the system work because there's three hoses involved in the system. So today, as we get ready to hit the road, when I'm packing up the basement, I'm gonna pull the wall back, take a peek and see if there's anything obvious that's going on with the water pump, but I at least need to look at it so I can plan for which one I need to order to replace it. Oh, hey, fancy seeing you here. So there's nothing obvious wrong with the water pump, but when you turn it on, it doesn't even make a noise, doesn't act like it's working at all. I was actually hoping there might be a fuse down here I could replace, but I haven't found one. If there is, it's behind this mess over there. And I don't really want to deal with that right now. So I'm probably just going to button this back up and worry about when I get home. But I needed to get the info off that so I know what I have, so I know what I can order next. This RV has the Lippert Flomax water pump. It's 50 PSI at three gallons a minute. And that got me thinking, since I have to replace it anyway, why not upgrade? Because my first search for new water pumps led me to some amazing water pumps that could do way better than the Lippert one. I found one that does 60 PSI at six gallons a minute. It says it's good for five appliances in the RV. Right now with this one, if we're showering, we can't turn anything else on. It literally kills the shower. So what do you guys think? I wanna upgrade it, but is there some unknown thing I'm gonna cause by upgrading the flow of this water pump? We're already redoing the entire water system anyway. Why not make it awesome? You know, it'd be really nice if I could just leave you guys down there and you could watch it for me. And if anything goes wrong, you could tell me about it. Y'all think it's a good idea? You want me to leave you down there? Don't worry. 
I wouldn't trust you to that. I'd actually trust you. I would never trust a GoPro battery to do anything. All right, that is gonna be another job for future Kevin. Future Kevin really is not gonna be very happy with me whenever he realizes how many things we need to fix on this RV when we get home. But there is something that we can do today to help future Kevin out. You guys remember, a few weeks ago I told you I have a black tank valve in the RV that's no longer working. Well guess what, that's also a future Kevin's problem and he is gonna have to fix that soon. And I'm sure he'd appreciate there being less black tank stuff in the black tank when he gets ready to do it. So today we're gonna do something a little different. Normally we dump and flush our tanks before we travel. We're still gonna do that, but I found something online called the travel flush or the travel clean, where it takes the dumping and flushing a step further. So today we're gonna dump and flush and when we're done, we're gonna fill our tanks instead of the 10% volume up to 30% volume and then add our treatments. That way tomorrow when we're driving down the road, we have that water sloshing around and doing stuff and hopefully moving things so that when we get home, there is less black tank stuff in the black tank valves. And future Kevin will really appreciate that. All right, while the dumping and flushing starts, let me take this time to give you a tour of the RV park. Welcome to Wonderlust RV Park here in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. This is the entrance. When you first pull in, there's the office where you check in and they have these huge staging areas for your RVs to park. Once you get checked in, they have an escort that will show you to your side. They have a trolley stop. So Eureka Springs is a huge tourist town. It's also a very old small town. And the best way honestly to see it is to take the trolley that takes you through all the highlights of the city. And you can actually get on the trolley here at the RV park. As you make your way to the RV sites, they have this right here, which is the bathhouse, the laundry, and they even have a pool. There's the pool. It's well after Labor Day, so it's been closed for quite a while. But check out these views right here. These are amazing views here in the Ozark Mountains in Northwest Arkansas. Here is the front sites in the RV, and they actually have the best view, but these are more smaller RVs. But look at this right here. Man, that's awesome. As you can see, there's actually not a lot of people here. There's one, two, three, four, us, five, six. There is six people here in this RV rack right now. So it's actually very quiet. And welcome to the social hall. You can see all six of us that are here are busy socializing. They have this outdoor pavilion area that is open to everybody. They have a gas grill, they have a wood burning stove, and they have this giant fire pit that you can cook on and if you want to use it all you gotta do is call the office and they'll come start it for you they also have two cabins one right there and one right there bathhouse number two they also have a second social hall with a small outdoor area and an even bigger outdoor cooking pit and down here at the end of the rv park on the edge of the cliffs is these premium sides. You get your own balcony with the picnic table, you get your own fire ring, and you get this awesome view of the Ozark Mountains. And this is our RV site. Don't mind the mess, we're packing up to get home. But this is our site. Huge pull through. There's the truck. You won't believe how much room we have behind the RV in this site. So there's the RV. There's the truck, and we still have that much room right there before we get to the road. So we can almost park two of these things in this site. And that's why we come here, because this thing has huge pull-through sites. They have good water pressure, they have sewer, and they have 50 amp. And so far in the three years we've stayed here, we have never had a problem with any of those. So what does it cost to stay here? Well, we pay $50.44 a night to stay here at the Wonderlust RV Park in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And for us, it's the perfect price. We actually don't come here for the RV park at all. It's got great amenities and I'm sure they're great when they're open, but we've never actually been here in season. Sure, they're open right now, but nothing's really open because it's after Thanksgiving and of course it's freezing every night. But the reason we come here is because this is the closest RV park in the area to my family's house that is open after November 1st. A lot of the parks up here, they close down November 1st and don't open back up till April. So that's why we're here. All right, the tour's over and that was probably gonna be my last RV park tour, at least of this year. Now, let's go check on the black tanks. 
You can't even dump and flush without having a problem. Guess what's broken now? This right here. This is our Volterra mess free valve. And it goes right there on the end of our drain valve. And guess what? I pulled on the handle and the handle broke. So now I stole that one right there from the back tank and now it's doing its job. Because the black tank valve on board is leaking, if we don't have that right there, black tank stuff is flowing out at all times. So that's right there. And now we're just gonna put a cap on there until we can get a new one of these. RV stuff, it's just not supposed to last, is it? You see that? Don't mind that. That's just duct tape holding my slides together until I get home. Another one of those things future Kevin's gonna have to deal with. And since we're on the subject of broken things, that right there still has a check engine light on. It comes on about once a day and we reset it, but that's also gonna be a future Kevin problem. Actually, that's a future Kevin's credit card problem and our warranty problem. But that right there still needs to be fixed. We are done dumping and flushing. I'm actually gonna dump one last time and I'm gonna let you guys see just how clean this water is after we go through this process. I promise you, it's not gonna be gross. You can actually watch. All right, guys, watch this water. All right, y'all see how crystal clear that water is. And that's coming from our black tanks. So now we know we left here with clean tanks, or as clean as we can get them doing this procedure. We're done dumping and flushing, and what we did was we filled the tank up with about 15 gallons. We put borax and Dawn and some Happy Camper in there, and hopefully tomorrow as we're driving, it moves things around. Worst case is it just smells really good, but doing extra cleaning can't possibly hurt. We're running out of daylight and I still gotta pack all this stuff up right here. So I'm gonna put you guys down for the rest of the evening, but first thing tomorrow, we get to hook this thing up and we're heading south for the greatest state in all of the USA. We're gonna be back in Texas tomorrow. You guys sleep tight and we'll see you first thing in the morning. Guess what time it is? If you guess Texas time, you are correct. We are Texas bound today, baby. Woo! We are packed up and ready to go. And you know it's a good day when you got all the women in your life in the car ready to go by 9 a.m. And the extra not morning person is smiling because what's today? Today is Texas day. I wore my shirt. Girls, Kaden, y'all ready for a train horn? Yeah. Where are we headed? To Texas! Woohoo! Goodbye, all Kansas! <laughs> Sorry. Hey, we love Arkansas! <laughs> she probably thinks I was honking at her. No, we're celebrating. We love leaving Arkansas. Sorry, we're Texas bound. Hey, Bob. You ready for Texas? Oh, man, I've been waiting all year for Texas. Let's go, baby! All right. Woo! All right, we've been on the road for an hour and a half, but we've only gone 52 miles. That's because Eureka Springs, Arkansas is really hard to get out of. We finally made it to the highway. We're gonna take a quick bathroom break and then back on the road. All right, quick break, which is good because we have a big day today. I know we're getting to Texas, but Texas is really far away. We have 350 miles and eight hours to do it. And we want to get there before dark. Welcome to Oklahoma and stop number two. We are about halfway. The truck needs diesel and def. And we're all getting a little hungry, so we're going to eat lunch now. All right, guys. Break time is over. Next stop, Texas. Welcome to Texas. I mean, the temperature's better, it smells better, I just feel better, the radio stations are better. Woo, I have missed you, Texas. Got us some Texas country jamming, 61 degrees instead of 20s and 30s. This is a good day. I mean, I, all around I'm just feeling better. The camper is still <laughs> broke, but it's gonna be fixed soon. It's, it's that much closer to being fixed. Future Kevin, also, 
is not so happy with past Kevin because he just found out that now that we're home, we're gonna have to fix all this stuff. <laughs> we made it to Ramblin' Fever RV Park here in Mount Pleasant, Texas. It's dark, but we got here. But there's been a change of plans. I'm gonna go talk to the front office and I'll let you know what's going on when I get back. All right, so what is changing? Well, we got here and we decided since we're only about 125 miles from home, that we can drive just a little bit longer and be done with this trip and get home tonight. We told the girls we were just stopping to stretch our legs. They have no idea that when we get to the next RV park, they're gonna see Phil and Lolo. And we're out of diesel. Well, we're not out, but we definitely would not have made it without stopping. I think it's been a long time since I filled up twice in a travel day, but today was a big day. I just checked it out. By the time we get there, it's gonna be 11 hours in the truck and 499 miles. That's way more than our normal 300 max, but we're gonna be home, so it's totally worth it. Look at that. I have really missed the price of diesel in Texas. Anyway guys, next stop, home. We made it home and look who I ran into. I'm back. That's right, Phil's back and the girls don't know they're here so we're gonna put them in the toy hauler, close the door and tell the girls we're taking a bathroom break. Y'all did so good riding today. It was such a long drive. I shower in the car almost 12 hours. No, 10 hours. Well, 11 hours. 11 hours. Press. All right, girls, let's go. We're here, we gotta get checked in. Gotta go park this thing in the dark, but I'll see you guys in the morning so we can finish up the rest of this video because we have a science experiment going on with the road clean on the black tanks. Good afternoon, y'all. That's right, I said afternoon. That's because we were tired after yesterday, so we slept in today, but we are glad to be home. But now that we're home, it's time for future Kevin to show up and start taking care of all these problems. But before we talk about the problems, let's finish up with our road flush experiment. I'm gonna look at it first to make sure it's not just, oh, look at this guys. Look at that. So even though the tanks were 100% clear water when we left, this is what it looks like after 499 miles of shaking while driving down the road. And before y'all ask, we did not use that bathroom the entire travel home. We used the rear bathroom the whole time. So this front bathroom, had no more black things added to it, and that's what it looks like when the water was clear when we left. So the road flush does get some things moving. So now that the science experiment is done, let's talk about some of the problems future Kevin has to deal with. We made it home on these tires, but they are done. We need new tires soon. The truck still has a check engine light, and we need to get that looked at as soon as possible. Our black tank valve is still leaking. Plus we have to do an entire basement renovation to repair all the damage from the water leak. After three years on the road, these things are done. We need new tires on the RV, all seven of them. Our side ski is still broken. We actually know how to fix this. Well, we know how to repair it. We don't know how to fix it. It's gonna continue to break because it's broken every single year we've owned it. But we gotta replace this. And then there is all kinds of small repairs and normal maintenance that needs to be done to this RV right here. Because we've been on the road 11 months, it's time to do all of our annual things and get this thing ready to go for next season. And all those jobs were future Kevin's problem. But now that we're home, it's time to get to work and get this thing ready to go. So anyway guys, we love you. Thanks for hanging out with us and we'll see you in the next one.